Hey everyone, I'm Clayton and this is Design Build Make. So I've always been a huge baseball fan. Growing up, my dad and I used to watch the Cardinals play like every night. And with the Cardinals having a historical beginning to this season, I decided I wanted to do a baseball themed build. So nowadays I live in California, which means the games actually start while I'm still at work most of the time. And I'm constantly pulling out my phone to check the score. And so I decided I wanted to build a scoreboard that could sit out on my desk and keep me updated at all times. So before I started, I actually went online and found that there was this Reddit user who built something almost exactly like what I wanted, except it's just kind of a giant screen. It looks more like a jumbotron than a classic baseball scoreboard. And if you know anything about baseball, you know that it's a sport that is couched in tradition. It's a sport that's obsessed with unwritten rules and superstitions. It's a sport that built a robotic system to perfectly call balls and strikes, but it doesn't use it. It still wants the human flaw of a real umpire. And so I wanted to build something that brought that classic tradition of baseball. Let me show you what I came up with instead. So here's my desktop scoreboard. The Cardinals are actually in Cincinnati as I speak in a tie game. It's four to four. But Cincinnati's threatening with men on second and third and only one out. Now this thing live updates. So let's watch and see what happens. Even though that didn't go exactly as I'd hoped, I gotta say, I'm loving having this thing to follow along with the games. It's quickly become one of my favorite things that I own. There are a ton of moving parts for this project. I mean, custom circuit boards, custom laser cut frame, paint, code, all of that. And so before just jumping in, I wanted to do a little bit of research. And lucky for me, my favorite team was in town, so I headed up to the city to do a little bit of recon. With my notes in hand, it was time to actually get started. The first thing I worked on was the code for this project. I was a little afraid that it would be hard to get the live update data, but props to the MLB. They have a free service that exposes the exact same data that they use for their play-by-play -play app. So that part actually ended up being really easy. All my code has to do is look for the latest game from the Cardinals and then extract all the little bits that I want to show and send it out to the displays. Speaking of the displays, these things turned out to be such a headache. So what I used are what's called a seven segment display. They're what you'd commonly see in like an old style alarm clock. Each one has seven segments. These are just individual LEDs that make up the digit that you want to show. And you have to be able to individually control each one. But there's 24 of these on the board because you have nine innings, two teams, plus runs, hits, and errors for both of them. When you add in the LEDs for balls and strikes and who's on base, we actually had almost 200 individually controllable LEDs on this board. If you just want to control a few LEDs with a microcontroller, it's not hard. You just write out a on or off signal and that's it. But microcontrollers don't have 200 pins that you can individually use. So you can't just do that with all these LEDs. Instead, you have to use something called a shift register. And basically these have like eight output pins each and you write data to them using just a couple pins one bit at a time. So you can actually daisy chain them together so that you have like 24 of them in a row, just writing data all the way out with just a few pins, which is great. But they turned out to be such a hassle when you have this many of them daisy chained together. So I started by just trying a couple of these seven segment displays in a little prototyping board, and I was able to run them, so I was happy with that. But I quickly realized that there's so much mess and room for error if I do all of this by hand. So I got to designing a custom circuit board so that I could keep everything kind of organized. So each one has a single digit on it, and it's made so that the inputs are on one side and the outputs on the other. And so you can just make little wire hoppers from one to the next over and over and over again. To drive each of these LEDs that make up the various digits and who's on base and everything, you need to have a resistor for each one, which means, again, almost 200 resistors. When you're using a circuit board, usually you do what's called surface mount components. And these, instead of having like wires that stick through a hole that you solder on, they just sit on top of little metal pads on the circuit board and you solder them there. And so it had been a really long time since I had designed a circuit board, like 10 years. And so I wasn't really sure what size to use and I just looked up what were the cheapest resistors I could buy online and went with that size. And let me tell you, that was such a mistake. After waiting like a couple weeks for these circuit boards to get printed, they came and I realized just how tiny these resistors were going to be that I had to solder on. And remember, I had to do 200 of these. 
they are only half a millimeter wide and one millimeter long. These things literally, if I breathed too hard, I would lose dozens of them. They were impossible to keep track of and impossible to work with. It was the biggest headache. When I first tried soldering one of these, I was thoroughly convinced that there was just no way I was going to do this. But after like 10 minutes, I got one resistor of the 200 soldered. And I thought, okay, maybe I could get used to this. So I actually looked up online, like what's the smallest size resistor that I should feasibly be able to do by hand. And everyone suggested not going below some, I don't even remember what size it was, but it was about three times the size of the ones that I used. Okay, it took longer than I'd like to admit, but here is the final box score portion of this project, all wired up. And uh, I'm gonna go try it out, see if they all light up. And I was just expecting it to work, right? I had tried with two, so why wouldn't 24 work? Well, 24 didn't work at all. <laughs> good news and bad news. The good news is I got them all wired up and they are all lighting up. Sometimes. <laughs> so as you can see, we're kind of getting random glitchy looking uh, data here. It's supposed to be writing fives everywhere actually. And, and as you can see, that's not really happening. So I'm checking out the one of the signals on an oscilloscope so we can actually see the waveform and everything. And just a second ago, it was doing something really funky. And so I went to go show Nora exactly what it was doing because I think I figured it out. And then all of a sudden it started working perfectly. <laughs> all the digits are working exactly as you want it to. No issues. And the oscilloscope is no longer showing the badness that I saw earlier. Everything's just right. So who knows? Apparently if we observe it on an oscilloscope, it'll work. Otherwise it might not. Disconnect it, see what happens. <laughs> see, now it's not working. <laughs> Well, that tells us something. Finally, after an embarrassingly long two weeks of debugging, I figured out the issue. I was sending a signal that was right at the lower bound of the voltage from the spec sheet for the shift registers. And this was working fine for just a couple shift registers at a time. But when I daisy chained a bunch together, the voltage for that signal was actually dropping as it went down the chain, just a little bit. But that was enough to actually bring it out of spec for the later digits, which meant that the data was getting corrupted sometimes. And with the electronics finally sorted, it was time to actually build this thing. So the whole body of the scoreboard is just laser cut and laser engraved. And now this was a new tool for me to use. I had never done this before, but it actually turned out to be the most fun part of the entire project. I'm shocked that something for the first time actually worked on my first try. <laughs> Long. And that worked way better than I thought. I just finished painting it and I think it came out really, really well actually. It looks just like a scoreboard, like one of the old tiny ones out in the outfield. I just got a little bit of assembly left. I'm gonna have to mount all of the displays and glue them all in place. Uh, but then once we get that, we're, we're almost done. So most of the time that I was working on this was a bit demotivating. I made the joke earlier about the Cardinals having a historic start to the season. That historic start is that they were just complete garbage for the beginning of this season. And that makes it not so fun to work on something where you're constantly checking the score. But something started to happen as I was finishing up the scoreboard. For whatever reason, the Cardinals started getting everything together and actually winning some games. And in fact, the first game when I got this all put together, they scored more than 10 runs, which is a little bit of an edge case for my scoreboard because I didn't want to add even more of these displays. So when they go, when a single digit is supposed to go over 10, I just light up a little dot in the corner and that means add 10 or maybe 20, who knows, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's something more than the number being shown. Since it completed, the Cardinals just keep on winning. So if you're a Cardinals fan, uh, all I can say is you're welcome and uh, hopefully it keeps going. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you're interested in seeing more things like this, please subscribe and leave a comment down below of whatever else you'd like to see me build. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, just watching the game. Talking to Sadie. Yeah.